introduction to Daphne, I was be a quite a rapid tour through. Um, so to sort of set the scene, um, good. Uh, just set the scene of why why we're doing Daphne in the first place about challenges of research infrastructure. Uh, I think it's become very recognised these days that that um, infrastructure and infrastructure systems um, is an area which has been massively impacted by by computing technology. And when we had our launch event last year, Sir John Armit from the National Infrastructure Commission said, data is now important, UK infrastructure is concrete or steel. So it emphasizes the importance of um, uh, the role of data and computing in, in infrastructure research. This of course leads to, to challenges, uh, massive challenges that come with that, that change in, in, in to, to a more computing, um, uh, based data intensive uh, approach that we need to be able to scale up, get more and more data, we want higher resolution, we, have, we need more compute resources to, to deal with more complex models. That leads, as uh, Tom has alluded to, a, a, a very large data integration exchange uh, question um, where we want to be able to share data between models um, to, to give much more detailed results um, and which requires the common standards which we've talked about uh, and then integration between models and integration uh, on a model level but also integration across scales where we want to model between an individual artifact writing equipment right through up through the levels of granularity to the whole country uh, but also integration across sectors so when we integrate uh, different infrastructure sectors water energy land use digital transport for example but also with the the wider uh, natural and economic and social environment in which those infrastructure systems interact and we need to be able to do that and uh, one thing that Tom hasn't mentioned is, is digital twins we're, we're kind of increasingly uh, getting involved in a digital twin agenda and that brings a whole slew of extra challenges as well which I, I will only just touch on in this in this talk so why we're trying to do this with Daphne so Daphne is an analytics facility for national infrastructures where we're trying to provide a, a computing platform uh, to improve our decision making for national infrastructures. So we can, we can um, uh, yeah, provide a platform to, to, do, to, to address some of those challenges I've mentioned. So this is an eight million pound investment, uh, which is over the last four years, finishes next year under the UCRIC program, the um, UK Collaboratorium for Research and Infrastructure in Cities Consortium. And this is uh, comprises of uh, 12 university partners led by the University of Oxford and our cells with the Vatican Laboratory, um, STFC at the Vatican Laboratory, um, who are the development partner and hosts. So, we're, so we are, are uh, charged with providing computing infrastructure to the academic community, to the research community, uh, and we have experience of, of building and running uh, high performance computing platforms. So that's why we were asked to, to, to help build and host this platform. Um, so what does Daphne provide? Well, it kind of provides these sort of four main components where we're hybrid com high performance computing platforms. So we can do them with some of that scaling up that we mentioned, uh, a secure repository. Uh, so we can gather together uh, national infrastructure data and also models uh, which uh, apply to that data uh, from different sources uh, uh, and quite heter heterogeneous sources at that. Um, and then a platform where we can then apply those models and data to develop um, richer models and, and particularly models that work together between the different pieces of code and then a place to make those data and models available for the, the long term. So to go into that in a little bit more detail, uh, we have a hardware platform. So there's a dedicated hardware platform um, which we hold in our, our data center, which currently has 27 server nodes with 792 CPUs and some GPU accelerators and uh, two petabytes of storage of various sorts, which ranges from uh, this you know, long-term disk store uh, to uh, very rapid storage so we can do quick data manipulations for particular models. 
and it is in our machine room and it's set up as a Kubernetes cluster. So we'll mention this a little bit later. That gives us particular advantages on the way we can then serve uh, models into the community. So this gives us, okay, it's not a, it's not a huge um, high performance computing cluster, but it nevertheless is a significant cluster which we can use to, to scale up models. And then on top of that, we've been spending our time uh, building a number of components on that. So a data storage platform um, based on object store, uh, and then five main component areas, uh, a database so we can, or data repository where we can, we can handle the data that we're being supplied with, a modeling service so we can uh, bring in different models in different places and integrate them together into workflows, a cloud environment so we can provide uh, enriched uh, functionality and remote access, a uh, visualization suite so we can provide uh, extra visualization facilities and backed up with a security service so we can give some assurance that we can uh, protect data to which sometimes is sensitive or licensed uh, so we can protect it to particular uh, um, particular users and respect those conditions. Uh, so I will not talk about all of these in detail but I will mention the the NID and the NIMS which are the two main components we've been working on. Uh, so starting with the NID, uh, so uh, Daphne, we supply uh, what we call a data hub or an information infrastructure, a place where we can bring the different data from different places uh, to share it, integrate it and curate it for the long term. Uh, so we provide a trusted uh, uh, data store within, protected by that DSS model, as I mentioned, and so we can bring in data from different places and link to other different data sources. Um, and this We've been working on a, a, a metadata framework to represent that data. Uh, but as Tom has already mentioned, one of the areas that we're really interested in doing is extending that so we can have a richer metadata area uh, um, to, to support different ontologies from different sectors and different fields. And also, as Tom mentioned, we are building this within a, a notion of a fair data framework so we can be uh, we can be findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And the, the, mo the motto there is as open as possible but as secure as necessary. Um, and that's the NID and we'll, we'll have a demonstration of that a little bit later. Uh, and then the other side is the NIMS where we're supporting user models. So the idea is uh, models and, and codes are developed uh, on all different sorts of ways, all different sorts of programming languages and using a wide variety of libraries. We want to be able to accommodate that. So what we do is we um, have, as I mentioned, set up a Kubernetes platform uh, and this allows us to bring in codes from any, from, what, from just about any source, uh, which are then containerized using a system called Docker, which kind of encapsulates all the code from, from a user uh, as a self-contained package brings in all the, all the operating system dependencies and the libraries that it needs so we don't have to worry about being compatible with our platform. It's, it's encapsulated in the Docker container, um, uh, which gives us great flexibility and independence. Uh, and then we can then still make those, execute those models, make them available and share them again within our security framework. On our, on our HTC cluster, accessing our, on our NID, for example, data on our NID. And then we can build uh, workflows between these. Uh, again, we'll show some demonstration of these later. So we have a workflow editor where people can build uh, workflows and, and combine models together to and then do the execution. Again, without dropping down to a sort of command line interface. So this gives a, um, uh, a an interface whereby um, people with de detailed knowledge of the platform can, can build and execute workflows. Uh, and this allows us to then build this information ecosystem at different, combine different models from different sectors and potentially at different scales. So that's a kind of a, a, an overview of the sort of the main functions and features in, in Daphne. Just a, a little, some words on where we are. Um, so as I said, we are in a four year program, uh, which finishes next year. So actually we're in actually in the last development stage of this phase one 
of this Portfolio Phase 1 process. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking to the community, doing requirements, gathering, design, and implementation over the first two or three years. We've now been doing, you know, doing an intensive development phase, uh, trying to make sure that we have as many features as possible for the end of the program. So one consequence of that is, is we're a bit of a moving target at the moment. So things tend to be changing uh, as we release new functions, new features, and, and some of the components are being worked on very, very extensively. Um, so yeah, don't expect, so, so yeah, so, so hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a stable platform that we can, that we can use uh, in the future. A lot of, uh, as I said, said, quite a lot of investment has come to us as, cent as central development hosts, but quite a lot of investment has also gone to universities. So uh, there is an investment of uh, nearly a million pounds, which has gone to develop uh, hardware in universities, uh, including in Oxford. So Oxford has a has uh, some visualization com capacity, I think, coming online there, which has been uh, funded from Daphne. Uh, we have been working very extensively getting pilots and, uh, and users onto the platform, the pilots program and a champions program, which I mentioned a little bit further on. We're doing a lot of outreach, a lot of webinars and hackathons like, like this one today, and we have a final event planned in March. And we're now looking forward to our sustainability plan for our sort of phase two development um, and what we might do in that. Uh, so so we're thinking very hard about what, what the things we want to do in the future more support for digital twins some extra additional support for things like machine learning so we can, we can provide that a richer data infrastructure in, incorporating more of that uh, in ontology development we've mentioned so we, and a framework for integrating models together more, more richly so so you know and we have a lot of irons in the fire a lot of things we, we are trying to get together so so we continue uh, into the future um, I mentioned the pilots update. There was a lot of pilots going on. Uh, these are just a few of the things that we're doing at the moment. I won't go through this in any detail, uh, but it does mention NISMOD here, which is a something in progress. Um, and here's some, some very brief examples of pilots we've already done, uh, where um, this one is a, a transport model where we have a, a railway line, this in case I believe it's in Cornwall, um, and we want to place a new railway station on the line. Um, and um, this is the impact of placing a new railway station on the line, uh, what it does to where people travel from to come to that new platform that new station um, at where what, what its impact on other stations might be. Uh, so basically how, how gives us an idea of where best to place the station to have maximized the impact uh, of its usage, minimize the travel to it, I guess. This one on the, on the right is a, is, a, is a somewhat different model from, from University of Leeds, um, looking at the Cambridge-Oxford corridor, but this time looking at the uh, the changes in patterns of, of people and how, um, how it affects um, households, jobs, and the gross value added economic development of the area. And it's using a model called SIMIM. So those are two early pilots we did. Uh, I, I won't go into this one because we, you know, because I think the, you know, we've, uh, this mod has obviously been mentioned a lot, it's something we're getting onto the platform right now. Do a lot of work with that, uh, but it's a very important case study for us for the integration between different models which is a key feature um, and then we're also been working with urban observatories as this case came from a hackathon we did with urban observatories um, where well this has the features of, of having sensors in, in in an urban environment uh, so we did some uh, work on you know, some some hackathons with their data so this is looking at traffic patterns in the morning between um, Newcastle and Sheffield uh, as, as an example of how we can street, we can gather data from two different urban areas and, and compare them together and this is kind of the leading us towards how we might in the future provide additional support for digital twins. So, um, I'll, I'll quickly mention the, the Champions program. So, as part of our program to get more people on, more users onto the platform, we funded a number of different uh, users um, uh, as to, 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 to do small pilots and, and do some outreach activities. Daphne's and give us give us feedback. 
Um, uh, and these are the, the uh, there are five projects uh, which were funded at Southampton, um, UCL, um, Cranfield, um, Sheffield, and a, a consortium led by UCL, which of course includes uh, Tom at Oxford, and that consortium UCL is focusing on uh, and research ontology, infrastructure ontology. Um, okay, so I suspect my 10 minutes are just about up. So yes, please. <laughs> yes, just to summarise, <laughs> um, Daphne, uh, an environment for such research, um, which is, you know, we see as a, as a collaboration platform where we can bring people together, we can bring data together, we can bring models together, we can scale them up. Uh, and, and share them together. So a, a place for future collaboration and research and also to provide uh, a legacy uh, for publishing and maintaining these models into the future. So I think that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brian. Um, Bethan, are you okay to now take over? Please keep questions coming in.